I watched uh, the daughter of the woman who was running the school, Peggy Button, and uh, she was so eloquent. I said, God, these people are supposed to do these bizarre things. I can't hardly believe it. And uh, so we went and met with them. And, you know, the school had been going on for years and years. And uh, they'd won awards. There wasn't a breath of scandal about them. And when I met them and talked with them, I said to myself, they're innocent. And Myra was a little apprehensive, although later on, she was just gung-ho about it. She, she attended Charles for years, you know. This thing was going on ad infinitum. And after the experience with the Atlanta child murders, he said, <laughs> what are we getting into, you know? But you felt there must be something to it. Now, in tracking it down, what I discovered, what happened was this, that a delusional schizophrenic woman accused them of molesting her son. Now, a police uh, chief wrote to the parents viewing these things. Now, a child therapist who was unlicensed had them come in, and she was very ambitious. Let's just say this. They came in saying they didn't, nothing happened to them, and they came out saying something did. Well, it, you know, it became the, the Lucy Peterson case or the Kobe Bryant case or just nothing to what that was. It was just incredible. You know, I was reading stuff, and when I met the man who had once been the, the district attorney, well, he had tapes. And uh, there were 30 hours of them, and we gave them to the attorney general, all of which really flamed the zealots and the parents who believed it happened. So there was one talk show after another saying, I ought to be in jail, and Myra should too, and they're because we're bribing the guy from the district attorney's office. Actually, we hadn't, we hadn't even met him for six months before when he came out and made his statement. But um, How did the two of you collaborate on the, on the screenplay? Well, Myra had such a good fix on it, you know, such a good basis on it. That it was fun, really. You know, we tossed lines at each other, and Myra's very talented, as well as beautiful, and she, uh, and she did. You know, she did a great job. She went for years in it. I mean, it was incredible. Here was this case which had nothing in it. There was about a year and a half of hearings. A year, you know, the trial went on and on, and Myra was hardly missed the beat. All a kid had to do at that particular time was to say, he molested me. And they would go to jail for years with no other foundation. And so to stand up to what they were saying, and my wife deserves a lot of credit too, they're standing up and saying there was no molestation. Now here you had Los Angeles, something like in the more than 98% believed in what, what they were saying. What were they saying? They were saying there were tunnels underneath the school where there were rooms where kids were molested. They were saying that the youngest teacher had a private plane and flew them for rituals to Palm Springs. And here you had a unlicensed therapist and a delusional mother who started the whole thing. And my God, you know, speaking of what happened in Nazi Germany, this outdid that, to believe that, you know? And there are still people like Geraldo uh, Rivera and uh, uh, some of the others who still believe it, you know? And you wonder, you say to yourself, would even those Germans in 1933 believe some of these stories? And uh, it was, speaking of television, we went to our friend uh, 
Mike Wallace and Lowell Bergman. And they did say they met, we got them to meet the teachers who were accused of this. And they put, you know, they had a very important segment, which they won an award for, interviewing the women and interviewing an awful woman of the district attorney's office named Lil Rubin. And she, you know, and they asked her questions. She couldn't even really talk about it. And an interesting thing about that was, too, you know, there was a district attorney named Glenn Stevens who left the case and who said, there's nothing in it. They never did anything. And my wife and I got in touch with him. We listened to him. We listened to the tapes. And we gave it to the attorney general. And the zealots and the professional haters were so mad that they said, my wife and I ought to go to jail because we bribed the district attorney, this guy in the district attorney's office. But the fact of the matter is he had come out and recanted six months before. Six months before you... you I even met him. Yeah. But what they did was they held a hearing and they had my wife on the stand and uh, they treated her as though she were a serial murderer, you know. And the accusations, Sinatra and I were good friends. And Frank called me up and he said, aren't you in jail yet? And uh, I said, you know, Frank, they never get me. He's not just your wife. And, uh, but anyway, I'm sure they were disappointed. They had nothing to uh, uh, prosecute us about.